From Channel 4's Eyewitness News, this is a Campaign 2019 special, The Race for Jefferson Parish President. Good evening, everyone. I'm Katie Moore. The decisions made by leaders of Jefferson Parish government affect the nearly half a million people who live in the parish. But as the state's second largest parish by population, those decisions also affect our region as a whole. And on Saturday, the voters will decide who is going to lead the parish for the next four years as president. So we've invited the three people running for that office to our Rampart Street studios tonight. You see them there. Let's introduce them. Joining us tonight are Bridge City resident Lee Bonacarrere, Je current Jefferson Parish Councilwoman at large, Cynthia Lee Sheng, and former parish president John Young. Thanks so much for being Good with us be tonight. Here. We Thank appreciate you, Katie. it. Now, here's how things are going to work. Instead of formal set times for each candidate to answer the questions, we kind of want this to be more of a discussion of the issues and how each candidate plans to tackle or respond to them with specifics. I'll work to make sure that each candidate has a chance to answer each question, and we hope that this way we can get to even more questions with 15 minutes total for this round. So we want to get started uh, with the first question, and I'm going to just throw it out there and let one of you take it, and that's how we're going to start things tonight. So the first question that we have for you guys is, aside from the texting scandal, do you think that Jefferson Parish President Mike Yanni has done a good job as Parish President? Give him a letter grade for us, A to F, and why? Who goes first? Uh, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, I think uh, uh, Mike Yanni did a, a, a fairly decent job. I have to give credit to the employees of Jefferson Parish. We're blessed to have dedicated employees who are out in the trenches every day. Uh, certainly a lot of things that were started were, were finished during his term. Uh, I think the citizens were served, and again, I give credit to the employees. We have over 3,000 employees who are out there at 2 o'clock in the morning fixing sewer and water lines at break, and, and Jefferson Parish is blessed to have uh, great employees who uh, keep, keep the trains running on time. Uh, but certainly, uh, there were some accomplishments in the, in the administration, and, and Jefferson Parish has moved forward. I think we're at a crossroads now. Uh, we've lost population for the first time in history over the last two years some businesses have closed some businesses have moved out and we're losing population to St. Tammany and St. Charles Parish for primarily two reasons uh, public education uh, and mm -hmm. young people can get more home and land for their money in St. Charles and St. Tammany and uh, what has Mike Yenny done to contribute to that well certainly we, we've seen uh, one of the things that we were able to do in my administration was to get Smoothie King to locate their international headquarters in Jefferson Parish. They've since moved out. We had uh, the baby cakes. They have left. Several businesses have left. We need to do more uh, uh, retention and expansion. We need to set up a series of, of, we need to cut through the regulations so our smaller uh, family-owned business can grow and prosper. We also need to bring in outside investment so that our young people have economic opportunities, don't have to move to Houston, Atlanta, Birmingham, or Nashville mm -hmm. to support themselves and their families. Ms. Lee Shang. I would uh, answer that question and say I think he's done a great job except for the fact and the issues that were in his personal life which really affected his ability to lead. But if you look at how he handled things, especially in terms of communication with the council, and I think that's what you would see if I got to be parish president, you know, getting along well behind the scenes is just key to a successful parish presidency. The reach out that council members feel that they're part of a team, that they know what's going on on the inside, that they're, they're around the table with you analyzing things, and that they're not seeing seeing things uh, on the news that they feel like they're in the same building with you, they shouldn't have to. I think he was excellent at that. He, he would call us directly if there was ever an issue. Um, and I think the other thing that is very key is that the people who worked under him did not feel intimidated to talk to the council. So his entire staff felt comfortable sharing information with us. I don't think he ever told his staff not to communicate with the council, not to share information, and that is so essential and was really a departure from the prior administration um, behavior. And Mr. Bonacarrier? I think he was horrible. The, um, Why? Because all of the waste Nobody knew anything that was going on. I know it's a part mostly with the uh, parish council, but he should have been informing the people. And then plus in my own personal life that um, his code department put false violations on my house, 14 of them in one month because I filed a complaint. So I was um, targeted and harassed. And uh, um, 
fines were up to two thousand dollars a day and it was directly he was directly responsible for that department so personally uh, and he it was just so much waste tens of millions of dollars of waste and I know he's not responsible for it, but he should have informed the people. He should, his administration should have been more transparent, and that's what I want to do. What specifically was wasted? What was money wasted on? Uh, the landfill, it's up to $12 million now. Nobody knows what's going on. There's pictures of duct tape wrapped around pipes for $12 million. We got duct tape. Now they're saying it's $6 million more money. There's the Theater of Performing Arts, that was $20 million more than it should have been, and it lasted six years longer than it took to build it. Noxious odors wafting through Jefferson Parish for two solid years, and nobody knows what it is, if it's cancer causing, causes respiratory distress, nobody's doing anything about it. Quickly before we move on, give him a letter grade, A to F. I would say F because if you don't have breathable air, nothing else matters. Ms. Lee Shang, what would you give him, A to F? On the operational side, I'd give him an A, but for his personal life, uh, really greatly affected it, and of course the letter grade would drop if you have to incorporate that in. How about you, Mr. Young? I'd give him a C because as parish president, he couldn't go to schools, and that was a problem. When you're parish president with the educational issue, you need to be able to work with uh, the school system. Okay, let's move on to our next question. Now, Smoothie King, of course, we alluded to it a little while ago, headed out of state, and you know there are very few major companies that are headquartered in Jefferson Parish, which we all know those are the source of the really good jobs that I think a lot of people want. So what are you specifically going to do to encourage more, some of those more major corporations to come and bring those good jobs? Ms. Lee Shang, let's let you start this one. Sorry to interrupt you. So if you look at economic development in the parish, and a lot of studies have been done on that, there are five key sectors that we really believe um, the growth should be for Jefferson Parish. If you look at the assets, the industry that we also already have and where the growth is, and that's in the food and beverage and seafood industry. That's water, transportation, distribution, and logistics. That's health care. That's IT systems and products. And that's water, coastal, and environmental areas, which, of course, is a way of life and uh, draws a lot of resources and we have to live better with water. I have been an advocate for several years on resiliency in living with water. Certainly we need that. We, we spend $70 million a year on drainage. Concreting and paving over everything is not the way to the future. That's the old way of doing things. You have to let the water hit the soil. And the second part of that, and I've been recognized by the USA Green Building Council on this measure, is that we should have that as a cornerstone of our economic development. We should be the folks that are pushing these products out to the rest of the country because no one knows how to live better with water than we do. We live in a bowl, the rest of the country understands that. We have Katrina, we have these storms all the time. So we should be not only living this way, but pushing these products to the rest of the country as well. Mr. Young? Well, we, I have a track record of successfully attracting and, and retaining businesses in Jefferson Parish. Number one, uh, People's Health was moving out of Jefferson Parish, got together with JEDCO, uh, and we worked with People's Health to save People's Health. There were 600 employees at the time, they're now 1,100 employees. We kept that major uh, business in Jefferson Parish. Worked with GNO Inc., JEDCO, uh, to get Smoothie King to locate its international headquarters here. Not only uh, locate its international headquarters here, but the owner moved to Jefferson Parish, put his children in Jefferson Parish schools, and he bought the naming rights to the arena. So that benefited the entire region. We got star services from New Orleans to Jefferson Parish because we have low water and sewage rates. But to answer your question, you have to work and provide tax incentives, but you have to have benchmarks to make sure they meet those benchmarks. And the other thing we have to do is we have to make sure, as I said before, public education. When companies come look here from outside in the New Orleans area, they want to know what's the status of your public educational system. The other thing we need to do is to have a trained workforce, and we need to look at students who aren't necessarily cut out for the four-year colleges to train them. They can get good paying jobs, sometimes six figures without a college degree, and those, those jobs are needed in this new economy. I'd like to see smart economic development, clean economic development, where we try to attract more IT companies to Jefferson Parish to provide those high paying jobs that our, our children who graduate uh, and our grandchildren, for some people who graduate from college, you go in Austin, Houston, Atlanta, Nashville, and Birmingham to get. We need to bring those jobs here. We need to obviously also continue to combat crime and make, pe make sure people are safe 
from crime and from flooding, whether it be from rainfall or storm surge. Quickly, how do you do that, though? How do you get those big companies to come here? You, Quick answer. you aggressively <laughs> go and get them, and you provide tax incentives. Tax incentives. I mean, we have, a, we have a unique culture here. Everybody who comes here wants to come here, but at the same time, you have to have the foundation for them to want to come here. You have to make sure they're safe from flooding, and you have to have a quality educational system. Right. Mr. Bonacari? Companies will not move here. The only companies that are going to come here now are people that pollute because there's air, the pollution is just all through Jefferson Parish, and people aren't going to move their employees here once they know that's happening. It's the same as the crime, high crime area. If they hear that there's strange odors coming through Jefferson Parish and nobody knows what it is and nobody's working to fix it, they're not going to move their employees here. The school the education system could be better, but if it's same, if it's pollution, they're not going to come here. So all it's going to be is dirty companies so from now on. So what are you going to do about it? And what can a parish president do about education, really? Oh, about education? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's not really our department. When I went to uh, high school, they had trade and industries and also D and E, or D and I. And it was for kids that didn't want to go to college and they would be let out their junior year a half a day to go work on cars. Or mo I did lawn mowers and it just gave them and uh, it gave them options, and I think we ought to bring that back. It was and it was fun. Right, not really something really the parish president has any control over. Right, so. I like it. I would suggest it and see if I could start that. Okay. But yes. you can work in partnership and collaboration with with the school system. I've spoken to the superintendent and offered to do that, and then we we also have a task force uh, that the parish president created, which I uh, am going to continue. Because it's so important, again, for our, our young people who live here need an opportunity for a quality education, regardless of their means, the means of their family. Mm -hmm. But it's also important, it's the foundation upon which you build economic development. Now, and if I could, sure, just because, sure. Um, we, you can partner with other agencies um, and erase these lines of government. And I reached out to Superintendent Brumley um, several weeks ago, and just last week, we brought in kids to show them what STEM is, the science, technology, engineering, math, because those partnerships are crucial. You're trying to push STEM to, to students, and we have STEM right here in Jefferson Parish. So these students were able to go out to the marsh, build a tree, um, plant a tree, come to our water laboratory and learn about water. So there are partnerships, even though we aren't directly with education, there are certainly partnerships that we have. Um, we're gonna do an after school system. I've already spoken to Superintendent Brumley about m moving the kids from his schools to our playgrounds, and that will be something that is in the, in the works right now. Okay, let's move on to our next question. We did an informal poll today of our viewers and asked them what their main priorities are for Jefferson Parish. One of the biggest issues for our viewers, at least according to our very informal poll, um, is infrastructure and drainage. That's on the top of the list. 64% of people throughout the day have said drainage and infrastructure are their biggest concerns. What are you going to do about it as parish president? And, and what are the problems facing the parish, do you think? We need, we need to continue to invest in our drainage infrastructure. And certainly we need to look at some, some green infrastructure, but we have the canal capacity we have the pumping capacity. Some of our problems are substandard subsurface drainage in neighborhoods. So we have to go and systematically find the neighborhoods. We've done that before and we have to continue to do that because we live eight feet below sea level and make sure we, we improve their subsurface drainage, increase it. The other thing that I'd like to see done is more pumps to the river, bisect the parish on the East Bank and the West Bank. For example, on the East Bank, take everything south of airline and pump it to the river, everything north of airline to the lake. We already have a pump to the river in Harahan. We need a pump to the river at the Orleans Jefferson line by the Jesuit baseball stadium, and we need one in South Kenna. We can do the same thing on the West Bank, pump everything south of Lapalco, where it's already being pumped, everything north to the Mississippi River. But we need to continue to invest in infrastructure because we live eight feet below sea level. And also, we need to uh, look at coastal erosion. Mm -hmm. I've served as president of Pace Parishes Against Coastal Erosion. And I've also served in the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority. So I know the urgency of that threat. And that's our horizontal levees, because if we don't take care of our coast, we can't build levees high enough to protect our citizens. Ms. Lee Shang. Certainly, I think this is a departure from uh, my opponent in terms of 
how we handle the future with our infrastructure. It is, I have been an advocate, again, for resiliency in living with water. Um, the canal that Mr. Young references was $8 million to cover a few blocks canal. We can't afford to cover over everything. You've got they to let the water the hit the soil. You've got to stop paving over everything. And they showed pictures of Houston um, when that flooded. And it was the first time I saw it on national news. They said it's because this city is nothing but concrete and asphalt. So we've got to turn the corner and really change the way we've built something in the past. We spend $70 million a year on drainage. We have 71 pumping stations. We have incredible pumping capacity and we will always have a reliance on pumping but we have got to be different in terms of bringing in pervious paving in terms of bringing in bioswales in terms of bringing in uh, plants that drink up the water um, and we're looking at this on the residential side as well as the commercial side we passed the first permit so um, it's an incentive for companies to retain and filter their water so we got to slow the flow and we got to really stop this pave pipe and pump mentality Thank you, Mr. Von Carrier. I've, I've flooded five times living in Jefferson Parish, so I know how important drainage is. Um, and I'm going back to wasting of tens of millions of dollars. I would like to put a stop to that and then divert that money to any drainage products, projects. And I do like to pump to the river, because that way, because everything that, one, every drop of water in Harahan that hits that levee has to go all the way to the lake besides the new pump to the river that they have now. But that only takes care of a small portion of it. And it's just too far. And I used to watch it back up. As soon as it started backing up at David Drive, I knew I was going to flood. It was inevitable. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Well, in the uh, next round, we want to. I would like to... to set the record straight on something. Quickly. No, quickly. Number one, when I was on the council, we put retention ponds at Earhart and Clearview and, and solved that problem. We also did a uh, retention pot at Earhart and Causeway. So it's a combination of things, but you're, you're going to have to continue to invest in infrastructure because you're not going to be able to drain the, these torrential rains with green infrastructure alone. It has to be a holistic approach. Gotcha. Okay. Now we want to move on to the next round. Again, we want to let the candidates ask each other a question. We determined the order of questioning earlier tonight with them doing a random drawing. So tonight, Mr. Bon Carrere is going to be the first to ask one of his opponents a question. I'd like to ask Mrs. Shane. And uh, also, Mr. Young said the same thing. They both said that they were going to target, aggressively target certain neighborhoods. And when I hear that, I think of that it's going to be discrimination. And they want to, they keep saying they want to take us into the future, but it seems like they're taking us back into the past. And that it shouldn't be, I know discrimination's immoral. What's the but question? But it's also for? illegal. How is she going to justify discriminating against certain people with a weaponized code department? One minute to respond. I never said those words. Uh, I've never used the words aggressively target, but code enforcement is certainly part of our quality of life initiatives. And I think um, Mr. Bonacarrera has been a constituent that's come to a council meeting and he is um, concerned about some of the violations that were um, personal to him. Um, I don't think we necessarily target areas. I don't think that's the right way to do it. But certainly when we get complaints from neighbors about a certain house or uh, there's some activity, um, code enforcement will look into it. So uh, I don't believe code enforcement targets it. I think they do some, um, uh, they put out their forces throughout the parish. And I, I'll say that. I mean, they will tell you about different um, areas that they've done and, and it's throughout the parish, throughout the entire parish, because it's incumbent upon everybody to maintain their property, um, to keep it looking well and street appropriate, because really, you know, if the person next to you doesn't maintain their home, it hurts your property value too. And if you don't have a code enforcement department and you don't have government monitoring those things, then you sort of lose your protection and your asset um, could decline as well. So we do need a code enforcement department, but I never use those words and I don't, I wouldn't believe in that. While we have you, it's your turn to ask a question of one of your opponents. So okay. who would you like to ask a question um, of? I, this question is to Mr. Young. Um, you were the attorney for dozens of municipalities and government agencies. Uh, current count is I think you represent 45 different public agencies through state class action litigation as a trial lawyer. My question to you is, if you are elected to this position, will you remove yourself from representing these 45 governmental agencies and the corresponding workload and not accept these payments and relinquish this work. 
that's a lot of work um, to have if you're the parish yeah, president. Yeah, and let, let me set the record straight. Uh, I've been in private practice since I left the parish president's office. I'm entitled to make a living. I have five sons. Yes, and that, I have done that because the opioid crisis is, is a crisis, and I look at it as a civil prosecution. But yes, as I did last time voluntarily, I gave up my private practice when I became parish president, and I'll do the same thing again. On all these 45 cases? Yes. Okay. Um, your turn. Okay. Time for you, Mr. Young, to all ask right. a question of one of your opponents. I have a question for Ms. Shang. Um, when, you, when you voted to approve the $100 million cyanide plant in January of 2018, when they had multiple violations of state environmental uh, laws in the months preceding that, and then you rescinded uh, the permit uh, earlier this year under public pressure. Uh, I want to ask you if, in a yes or no answer, will you commit tonight to the people of Jefferson Parish that you will maintain your opposition to the construction of a $100 million cyanide plant in Wagaman, Louisiana? I can ask, answer it however I choose to, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So with that, you know, that's current litigation, so I think the litigation is going to determine how we move forward on that. Um, the council did vote for storage of cyanide, and then we did rescind that vote, partially due to, of course, constituent concerns and some LDEQ reports. But I have to point out the hypocrisy of Mr. Young, who also voted for that measure. Not only did he vote for that measure for the expansion of this chemical facility, he was at the groundbreaking for these three companies for a billion dollar investment, saying it was a, a dream come true for Jefferson Parish. And he voted on these measures as well. And my point here is that if Mr. Young had a problem with hydrogen cyanide, I think he needs to do his research a little bit more because hydrogen cyanide has existed at that plant since the 1950s and Cornerstone in their press release and at that event said they produce acrylonitrile whose byproduct is hydrogen cyanide. So I believe the gas mask that he carries around should have been that day on the groundbreaking instead of a shovel in his hand, but should have been that day um, protesting that very issue. My kids live here, my kids live here, just like your kids live here, as if I would want to harm them in any way, as if I would want to contaminate the air that they would breathe. It's almost ridiculous and the hypocrisy is almost, it, it, it is silly, the hypocrisy on this issue. I need to set the record straight. Cynthia, you can deny the facts, but you can't change the facts. Number one, you exercise poor judgment and you didn't do your homework. Number two, you're misrepresenting the facts to the people of Jefferson Parish. The fact is, that ammonia plant wasn't even conceived until 2013. I was parish president. It was led by, it, wait, wait, it was led by Bobby Jindal. You voted for that on the council. I didn't have any vote. I was parish president. This is president. a picture of Mr. Yes, Young I at don't the groundbreaking. I, I, I at Cornerstone wait, wait, groundbreaking. Wait, wait, let me finish. Let me finish. So you I, had your, you had your must, time. Let you me don't finish. have to touch me, Mr. No, Young. No, but let me finish. It's my time right you, now. You don't need to touch me. Okay, let, let me finish. You, yes, I was at the, the, after the council voted for it with the administration, carried it out. I was at the grand opening. There was no vote. You said I voted, you voted? for it. No, I did not. I was, I was parish president at the time. That's the fact. Okay. I you, want to set you that record straight. You welcomed them, and you said it was a dream come true for Jefferson Parish. And two years after they finished the, the point, at, two you're, years you're again, mis, you're after they the finished facts. the ammonia plant, I couldn't be more excited yeah. about the impact that it has already had on our community. It confirms that the West Bank of Jefferson Parish can accommodate a globally competitive sure. company. That's okay. all. No, nobody. That did. chemical was present when you no, were here at the groundbreaking. No, the, I'm just calling you're, out your hypocrisy. You're comparing to apples and oranges. Wait, I want we to finish. We have to move on. Comparing okay. apples and oranges. He doesn't realize that no, hydrogen she, cyanide she, is a byproduct of no, acrylonitrile. She, she is comparing apples to oranges. The fact of the matter is, she voted for a $100 million cyanide plant that's mm -hmm. going to produce but there's no cyanide plant. of cyanide. First of all, okay. there is no cyanide plant. plant. There's she, cyanide storage on a right. huge complex. There's no right. cyanide you, plant, you, you and can, the picture you, you show can, on the commercial is not a you, cyanide you can, you can plant. Deny it's the time facts, to move on, but we're going to have to move on. The facts. We're running out of time, so we have to move on. Right. We have a rapid fire round right, that we want right. to do and ask you guys some questions, although that did generate some good discussion, so thank you. Sure. Um, the, next, uh, the first one um, that we're going to ask tonight is, should the landfill accept industrial waste? Should the parish go back to doing it? Yes or no answer? Mr. Young. Absolutely not. We didn't accept it under my administration. Okay. Ms. Li Shang. No, we, we should not. No. Mr. No. Trevor. No. Second question. Who are you supporting in the sheriff's race? Mr. Young. I'm not supporting anybody in the sheriff's race. I'm concentrating on the parish president's race. Ms. Li Shang. Sheriff Lapinto. Undecided. Undecided. Okay. Do you support body cameras for the Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office, Mr. Young? 
Yes. Decision. That would be a call left to law enforcement. I know it's uh, a, a complex issue, and I would support law enforcement. Yes or, or no? no? Um, yes. Ms. Absolutely, Conner. yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you support LCMC as the operator for East Jefferson Hospital, Mr. Young? Well, I supported that uh, back in uh, when this first came up. I supported that the hospitals get together with one partner. So yes, now. Well, well, right now I'd like to know what the details are, but certainly Je uh, East Jefferson needs a partner mm -hmm. because it's in bad shape. But I'd like to know the details of what's being discussed, and I think there needs to be more transparency okay. in that process, so the public can also and the media can also know what's being discussed. So yes or no. I'd have to get more details. Okay. I think I will support a partner for East Jefferson, but I'd like to know the details. Ms. We Lisa. certainly need a partnership. We're in due diligence right now doing that. The employees at East Jefferson General Hospital have been uncertain for years, so we mm -hmm. need to stabilize that hospital and get with a large player in the market. So yes, I hope, I hope these deals work with LCMC. I don't have enough first. information on that to okay. make a decision. Okay, now we want to move on to our um, closing statement portion of our forum tonight. We have 30 seconds each to give a closing statement. Mr. Bonner Career, you drew your name as the closing statement first person, so yeah. please. Both of my opponents love industrial plants. You could tell they're arguing over them. I don't like them. I don't like pollution. Um, and also, I don't like the targeting. That was in one of her mailers that she was going to target certain neighborhoods. It could be for a crime, but I don't like it. And I want to make the people of Jefferson Parish, I want to tell them that I'll never weaponize any part of Jefferson Parish against anybody because I don't believe in discrimination. Everybody is going to be treated equally when I'm in office, and they will never and if you, it will just be every, okay. it'll run much better when I'm president. Thank you so much. Ms. Lee Shang, you're next. I believe with every fiber of my being that elected officials who work well together behind the scenes deliver great constituent services, quicker constituent services to the people. Um, so this is, I'm, I'm so proud to have the endorsement of so many elected officials. Um, it's not about a popularity contest. It's not about being on the inside of the crowd. I think it's an acknowledgement and it's given momentum to my campaign that of 10 years of public service, uh, I've treated people with respect, I've tried to have honest conversations, and I tried to build consensus. So that's why I'm, I'm happy to have the endorsement of the Gambit. Today we got the Times-Picayune endorsement, um, the Jefferson Chamber, the business groups, the union, the home builders, um, as well as the firefighters. So uh, great you. momentum for our campaign. Thank you. Mr. Young. Uh, this election is about the future of Jefferson Parish and which candidate has the qualifications and experience to lead Jefferson Parish to a better, more secure, and more prosperous future. I have proven leadership in handling crises such as major hurricanes and the BP oil disaster. My opponents do not have any major crisis management experience. I opposed the construction of the new Sinai plant. My opponent, Cynthia Lee Shang, not only supported it, but then she tried to falsely claim that I supported it. I wasn't even in office at the time. Uh, that to, is not correct. I think we're going to have to leave it there for tonight. It's 30 right. seconds that you each had, and unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for tonight. But I want to thank you all three for being here. There is a lot at stake for Jefferson Parish. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget, Election Day is Saturday. Have a great night.